Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. That's right, your eyes don't deceive you. We have achieved the trilogy. Today will be the third video covering the Skullgirls censorship controversy. Just when you thought the developers of this franchise had hit rock bottom with their recent decisions, we fell through the floor. Things have gotten even worse. Now, before we get into the latest updates, let's do a quick rundown of all the events leading up until this video. So about a week ago, Skullgirls came out with this horrible update regarding their products. It is a censorship update, removing a large volume of content, mainly fan service, from their games that have been out for well over a decade now. So, as I stated, the main focus was removing fan service, which is a very odd move for a franchise in a fighting game that has not only integrated a large volume of fan service, but has also used fan service as the main selling point of their game. It is probably the thing that Skullgirls is most known for. So removing fan service from their games is very, very bizarre, especially a decade later. It's like ordering a cheeseburger and before you take your first bite, they remove the burger patty and the cheese. Like there's not much left if you take away the fan service. And obviously a lot of people are upset about this. Again, decade plus old game and you remove the core aspect that attracted a lot of people to the franchise in the first place. Not to mention the fact that they are quite literally taking away things that people paid for up until a decade ago. That includes things like art books, their digital art books, that people paid for. Which is another reminder to buy physical copies of your favorite media when you have the chance. Now, of course, there are a lot of Twitter Puritans celebrating this removal of fan service because, well, they're schizos and also apparently taking back things that people paid for is based as long as it's owning the uh the fan service enthusiasts yeah uh anyways but the real fans were very upset about this and in a perfect storm where skull girls has been on sale recently and costs only roughly i believe two dollars at the moment there have been a lot of negative reviews not only from old fans but new people expressing their distaste and concern about a franchise removing fan service 10 years after the product has gone out. Right now, we are touching at 5,500 mostly negative recent reviews. It has been a bloodbath, ladies and gentlemen, and for good reason. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you that the situation has managed to get worse. Many thought it wasn't possible, but these leaked Discord messages put the final nail in the coffin. It actually managed to get worse. This contains at least one of the devs for the Skullgirls franchise, and it contains messages that are a direct insult to Skullgirls fans who are upset about fan service being removed. And we'll read them in a second, but yes, this is captioned perfectly. It is certainly Jover, okay? If you weren't already disgusted by their recent decisions, this will make it very clear that you should not support Skullgirls. So who is this person in the messages? Well, this is one of the developers of Skullgirls, a person named Aatrox. Now, we're going to see them in these messages right here. They are replying to a person named Miyazaki. I'm not quite sure who that person is, but we certainly know that this Aatrox person is one of the developers of Skullgirls. So Aatrox begins by saying a lot of the original team went on to do their own thing, like Richard, Alex Laugh, blah, 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 blah. Then Miyazaki replies by saying, yeah, it's still the majority of the OGs, referring to the original developers. And I knew you guys were never comfortable with certain stuff in the game where Aatrox replies, lol, I mean, I liken it to just housekeeping, where Miyazaki replies, and to see so many people say, no, this is what drew me in specifically, just makes me pity them so much, where Aatrox replies saying, like, there's a dirty sock in the corner that's just been there for years, and we only just had time to get it out of the way now. 2011 was such a different time too. Uh, yeah, a better time. 2011 sounds like a much better time where we weren't freaking out over pixels and removing content from games that people paid for to impress people on Twitter. This is a game that fostered fan service. It profited from fan service. It promoted itself on fan service, and that's what drew a lot of people in. That is a very obvious reality. And removing these things that people paid for and joined in and supported your franchise with are now being removed and people are leaving and they're upset and this developer calls it housekeeping and compares it to getting rid of a dirty sock calling your fans and your customers 
dirty socks that need to get out of the way. Are you kidding me? Like, this is such a terrible, terrible look. And honestly, anyone still supporting Skullgirls after this, like, you're a chump. Like, they are openly mocking the core of their fan base. And yeah, if it wasn't obvious by their public decisions, their private ones, make it very clear. They do not support their own fans. They don't care about their own fans. And they liken you to getting rid of a dirty sock. Like housekeeping. Getting rid of your loyal fans by taking away content they paid for. But moving on, I think it's just over. Okay, I don't think there's any reason anyone can stay here. It really is that bad. Skullgirls, rest in piss. Okay, the, the, the negative reviews are going to continue. But we're going to move on to a different topic. Now, uh, pause. Uh, Mihoyo, if you're listening to this, I am blocking these Genshin leaks. Okay, there's nothing on my screen. I censored it. I'm just using the message. Okay, we already you already falsely striked me once over a, a potential leak. We're not doing that again, which I fought it off last time, but I don't, I don't want to go through that again. So I will describe what's in this image. It is a lolly character. It is a potential leak of a new character, and it is very clearly a lolly character. Now, this leak has gotten over 20,000 likes, a lot of attention, but the caption is unreal. So in quotes, also YouTube, don't, don't strike me down, it says, this midget is a nurse, referring to the lolly character. Yes, these people are terrified of a little four-letter word. They would rather use a term that many people consider disparaging than simply say lolly. They would rather say that and actually say something that many contain or many people consider a slur instead of saying that nasty word lolly. Yes, it's like they're Voldemort. They will literally say anything else. And it is absolutely hilarious to me. You can see replies to this. They're even weirder. They just can't accept the reality that there is a theme in their game that they don't like. This person saying, in the replies to the leak, saying, please don't say that word. You can say child model or character or something else. Yeah, that sounds a lot less weird. Child model. You would rather say child model than lolly? That sounds a whole lot weirder if you ask me. But here's the funniest part. This character, like many others, when it comes to their source code, they literally use the body type Lolly. A Lolly body type. It's right in the game's codes, okay? Genshin calls them Lollies. And yes, they correctly say it too. Body type. Because that's what Lolly is. It's a body type. It has nothing to do with age. Like Twitter would like to believe. It's just a body type. A petite body type. And that's how they describe their Lolly characters. That they have a Lolly body type. And honestly, again, how do these people consume Genshin Impact if they're so afraid of Lolly? I mean, this it, they keep adding more characters. Clearly, people really like them. They really like these Lolly characters. I remember when this branch here, this meme, had two characters on it. They're running out of real estate at this point because there's so many Lolly characters. They're some of the highest selling banners in the game. But nonetheless, uh, more Twitter freaks, in particular... Genshin Impact related ones providing us with free content. So we got to be grateful for that one. They're always giving us some free content. So I thought that was a uh, funny and more lighthearted follow up to the Skullgirls drama, which hopefully is over. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys hanging in there and watching the video and uh, share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.